All right. Well, I'm very excited to be here with Britta Phillips. Britta, thank you so much. Thank you just you. you just got done. We're here at Pioneer Town at Pappy and Harriet's. Very interesting uh, venue. We're actually in kind of a cabin right now. We, or it's how would you? It's backstage, but it's a yeah, it's a little cabin. It's a cabin it's green a room. Very nice backstage area. It's yeah. probably the nicest, one of the nicest. Yeah. See. They spare no expense here at Pioneer Town. And you just got off the stage, uh, and you guys played a fabulous set. Uh, Thank you. you. and your band with Dean and, and uh, your drummer. And um, I not to spoil anything for the fans, because this may be a song that you may play at upcoming tours, but i got to say that I'm a big f- fan of the, the Cars, and your version of Drive was, was absolutely beautiful. And is that a song that you play uh, a fair amount, or is it yeah. was it a special event that we got no, to hear no, that today? No, no, I've been playing that at every show. It's a good way to end it, because everybody likes that song. Yeah. Well, speaking of the cars and other things, other fabulous influences, I wanted to ask you about some of your early influences. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you did How a early? Uh, the earliest memory the that you very have. Early? The earliest memory. We're going way, way back. We're getting That's Freudian easy. with this. I, I okay. Feel like the, the earliest ones are easy. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> It can well, be embarrassing, always, too, but that's okay. Right, I can give you, uh, there's like, probably the earliest one I can remember is, like, Tiny Tim, Tiptoe okay. Through the Tulips. He was a surreal guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a very interesting guy, yeah. which I did, had no idea at the time. I was just, like, loved it because yeah. I was a kid. Um, the, the first, um, I Feel the Earth Move, uh, Carol mm. King, oh. yeah. Benny and the Jets, Ooh, yeah. you know, that was a little older. What was the first album that you ever uh, oh. purchased or obtained? Do you remember that memory? Yeah. yeah? What was that one? Frampton Comes Alive. Ooh, classic, classic. Yeah. yeah. Show Me the Way, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw him play a show in a gold lame jumpsuit when I was um, a young teen. And it forever uh, brought you down a course of musical <laughs> expression to this day. And I didn't say you see with gold lame, but maybe next time. Yeah, I'm. I would love a, to wear a jumpsuit every day. I would like to have four jumpsuits, one for every season. Ooh, that's nice. And it'd be so easy to just get dressed well, every day. You know, well, <laughs> speaking of jumpsuits, you're you're. From what I understand of your career, you've had a very diverse background, and you've been able to sort of jump from one topic or one one skill set to another. And and starting out doing so basically a voice work. Um, from the 80s in the cartoon Gem, which I remember that, and it was it was fabulous. And I know that Gem, in talking to a lot of female musicians, people wouldn't really think about this, but I'm sure you get this all the time, young female acts or, or all girl bands or whatever that talk about, wow, Gem was like, like She-Ra and other things, was a really uh, uh, positive sort of role model for me yeah. as, a, as a female. What kind of stories have you heard from people, from fans? Oh God, um, so many, it's hard. I mean, <clears throat> The ones that are most moving to me, obviously, you know, if it's inspiring women to make music, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Often I hear, as I've been to a couple of gem cons, okay. Okay. where those are the, the uber fans. Hardcore. I've heard about um, the My Little Pony cons and, and yeah. all that. So well, there was a gem con, and I went to two, and mm. uh, I've heard stories from people who have said, you know, they had very difficult childhoods and that's you know a show they really sort of they it, attach, attached it's like to a, it. it's a safe yeah. escape you know yeah. a safe place and um, yeah so yeah. that those are the movie I don't want to get into details because they're, yeah. they're heavy some deep of them stories, deep yeah stories. But, but from the kind of more on the lighthearted I guess the, yeah. the musical end I mean people mm. saying man I when I was a kid I, I heard I saw that show it was rad you know it was Jem and the rockers and and you guys were uh, trying to compete against the misfits Glenn Danzig and Doyle those guys never sued the show for trademark infringement for yeah, punk uh, punk uh, co-opting or whatever but yeah no it's amazing the female uh, misfit. They figured no one would would mistake them for, for the <laughs> band. <laughs> That's yes, I think you're. That's right. That's right. Well, and then beyond, in terms of jumping from skills from from that into act acting, um, I actually remember this movie, the 1988 uh, flick uh, Satisfaction, with Julia Roberts and who else was on there? Justine um, Bateman. I loved her. I had a crush on her. Liam Neeson was in it. Can you believe it? And wow. and Deborah Harry, Debbie oh, Harry was in it. Wow. And wow. I got to meet her, which like. Wow. Made my head explode. And for those that don't know the premise of the movie, it was a lot of uh, pretty young women, um, skilled musicians doing their thing and, and making it in the music world. And like Jem, 
you know, I mean, a lot of themes there. Uh, yeah, female girl empowerment. Is. Girl, I, I'm sensing themes here in your career. I, I had no plan. It just sort of yeah. happened, you know, which is one of the reasons why I called my album Luck or Magic, because it's sort of, I really didn't yeah. plan anything. I just yeah. feel, I don't know, yeah. call it luck or magic yeah. or fate. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of your most late, your most recent album, Luck and Magic, I wanted to talk to you about sort of the creative process and differences in that album versus some of the other albums you've put out um, in different bands, including Luna and your work with with Dean. Um, how would you sort of describe this most recent album in terms of um, being different than your other works? Well, it's it's hard to describe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wanted it to be. The records Dean and I make together as Dean and Britta are more um, romantic. I mean, I definitely have some romantic songs, yeah. but I wanted to try to write... Uh, some of the original songs I wrote are a little... <laughs> a little more, f like, a little darker or mm -hmm. manic mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. uh, relation being in love or, okay. you know, love... Not is it's an exquisite torture. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you know, it yeah. is like falling in love. Is, the, is and you're the raw same and you're kind vulnerable. Of feeling is when you're like, you know, um, losing your mind or something yeah. Yeah, <laughs> slightly. Totally. It, it probably affects so. the brain. It's like uh, anxiety and excitement are yeah. exactly the same, but the brain interprets them yeah. differently. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to go into like sort of a little darker little alleys yeah, okay. but but still have it be kind of blissful sounding yeah. and empowering also um because uh when you fall in love you feel kind of helpless and mm -hmm. weak and so when i was writing these songs as kind of um about falling in love mm -hmm. and putting a spell on myself that felt like i was taking charge you know okay. that's what okay. singing and listening to songs can kind of be it's like yeah. a mantra that yeah. makes you feel different about I, things I, I, do things just come to you or do you really just sit, do you really sit down and concertedly um, focus your energy in um, you know writing lyrics or working through some instrumental stuff um, what, what does the creative process um, look like for you I mean it's never neat it's always kind of um, messy mm -hmm. and again I, I hate to use the word magic again but it has that feeling where when I sometimes uh, the best stuff just pops out, and I don't feel like I really had anything to do with it. I just am like, how did I get this? Yeah, yeah. That was very, I just feel very fortunate to have... You were like have a confidence. vessel. You were a vessel that sort of transmitted something. To, yeah, explain it. It's not like I was thinking word for well, this. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, I will sit down. I'd say the... Uh, <clears throat> which is the right brain, the left brain? The left brain is more like an editor. So all mm -hmm. the creative stuff just... It flies out, mm -hmm. flies all around, yeah. um, and you try to catch it before you forget. A lot of the times, uh, stuff comes to me right as I'm falling asleep, mm -hmm. and then it's like, all right, get up and write it down. Or, or dreams, too, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Sometimes I haven't written it down thinking I'll remember, and it just, no, it's gone. Wow. Um, I mean, it, maybe it came back. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. um, so I think, yeah, the getting down to business is, is editing, you know, like, is, or and the critical and critiquing it yeah because I don't think like necessarily everything that flows out of me is like worth listening <laughs> to <laughs> some musicians talk about a lot most of the real work is the editing process you yes. you th sort of throw up things cathartically like a Jackson Pollock painting and then you gotta buff it out and contain it and clean it up yeah. and yeah yeah but it's I mean sometimes I'll just uh, music is really easy that I can just sort of generate all the time yeah. but um, I would say lyrics that's the stuff uh, that it takes sometimes it doesn't take any time so I don't know yeah. sometimes but when, when I have to finish a song usually it's like uh, yeah. and sometimes I'll just be playing a guitar and making um, making up sounds and making up words mm -hmm. and then they like your brain kind of makes connections mm -hmm. and, and will uh, it makes sense it'll make sense out of something eventually yeah. and a lot of it is subconscious yeah. too so yeah. um you can worry about it in your conscious mind but i feel like if you just mm -hmm. sort of have it on your mind mm -hmm. stuff gets figured out 
talking about music and we talked about some of your early influences when you were coming up uh, sort of when you were in the bell towers and, and and other bands sort of like in the 80s and stuff i'm a big fan of sort of 80s um, college rock and and eight, college radio and punk and all the things going on in the 80s it was such a vibrant scene and for you when you were coming up as a musician uh, what was that like i mean did you play with other did you collaborate with other bands that we may uh know from that era or it was more later with luna and, and other projects well, where uh bell tower was the first real band i was in yeah. i was in a cartoon band and then a movie band and then, and then the bell tower band. and we yeah. moved to london which i guess we moved there in 89 so mm -hmm. we we're right on the end so i was <clears throat> there when you know galaxy 500 was in the melody maker yeah. and and teenage fan club and yeah. all these you know uh -huh. my bloody valentine so i i um yeah. it was great for me moving even though i had lived in new york i got exposed to so much more music yeah. because of the the country's very small and they have that one big radio station and the music papers so you just get all everything you all get, the cool you, shit. you get john peel to play your stuff yeah. Boom. Yeah, we've done a lot of interviews with um, different artists about his influence, even 70s punk, you know, Mark Gardner from Ride, uh, Deb Goosh from My Bloody Valentine. Just and I love John Peel sort of one of my idols, even though I wasn't British, um, just to think of the I would argue there probably have been few singular people whose uh, DNA has touched yeah. upon, you know, Rodney on the Rock, maybe here in L.A., up there no doubt but john peel but maybe the ultimate just, but i yeah this country is so big yeah. that it's harder to to just get noticed here yeah. which is one of the reasons we as a band moved over yeah. there was just so we could tour a country and and get gets get seen <laughs> it's interesting too because usually when we do interviews we hear about the opposite we hear about bands across from the atlantic coming over here and and being you know hanging out or staying here but not as many stories i i know but it's not the first time that's happened i know folks like even chrissy hine back in the day came across mm -hmm. and was doing some stuff with malcolm mclaren and yeah. didn't quite work and then she came went back to the u.s and and the pretenders but um that was an interesting scene late 80s um the the manchester scene I, there was a lot of interesting experimentation That's going amazing. on yeah, yeah. manchester's i wish i had spent more time there but i was based in london no okay. Okay. london's but, no no and, and that another thing about being in england that it was surprising after living in new york maybe i just didn't know the right people in new york sometimes it's all about what neighborhood you're mm -hmm. in because mm -hmm. dean i know Dean was there the same time I was. Wow. But I you had, guys never actually crossed paths no, back then. Okay. until 2000. Okay. But uh, I found out a, a lot about American bands, hmm. you know, when I moved there, like Sonic Youth and all, you and know. They had more critical followers in the UK than here in the States, kind of? Yeah, there was just, they were just everyone that you would run into mm -hmm. would know who they were. Right? I don't know. It was yeah. maybe it was just the people I was keeping company yeah, with. So. But I feel like it was yeah, easier to find out about all those underground bands or yeah. whatever you would call indie now. Indie, yeah, UK indie or, or whatnot. Yeah. But I love. Yeah, that's that's my heart. That's my era. And and I wasn't around in the late seventies to see the punk or CDBG. Oh, but yeah. I I remember the late eighties, early nineties, and the pre Nirvana years, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I missed all, I was around then, but I was in rural Pennsylvania in the late 70s, so okay. I was just like okay. classic rock, okay, okay. except for the talking heads, I knew who they yeah, were, because yeah. they were on the radio. Were you anywhere near Hershey, Pennsylvania? Uh, no, I was kind of Bucks, Bucks County. Okay. I wanted to live on a farm when I was a kid for some reason. Oh, really? I, okay. Okay. I had yeah. a fantasy about that. Not, I didn't know I was going to be a musician until I was... Uh, until I started singing in my car. I didn't know I could sing loud wow. until so I was in my car. So thought, yeah, that <laughs> Apple, that thing that's going on, car karaoke, you were you were like a, a visionary around that that's way back. Great then. way to learn how to, re I mean, because yeah. when, when do you have privacy? I mean, when can you really just let it out? Even in the shower. People talk about singing in the shower. It's like, it, you don't have. alone yeah. or you don't have neighbors. It's yeah. like a car, You that's the place. Yeah. That's yeah. so you can try it all out there, yeah. and no, nobody's going to laugh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's no. going to hear. No. It's got to be surreal to be playing with a teenage fan club who 
certainly had a huge, huge, left an indelible mark on music. But in terms of like current bands that are out there, maybe um, contemporary bands or maybe bands from a while back, what are you spinning at home? What's on your turntable? What do you listen to in your car? Right now, I really like uh, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, I like Tame Impala. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love Angel Olsen and Kate Le Bon. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, those are up there. Paper Cuts is another great mm -hmm. band. San Francisco band now, LA based. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. Well, for the fans out there, in terms of upcoming projects, you know, we've got a big tour right now with Teenage Fan Club, going to a lot of venues, interesting things. What can fans out there expect um, from Britta here in the coming year? Um, going on tour with uh, Luna, because we have okay. a new Luna album. Awesome. Uh, in the fall, okay. I may be doing more touring. Okay. This popped up, so okay. maybe another tour will pop up. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> well, it sounds like it sounds like you're you're just you're a very zen person. You know, go with the, you know, again looking at your career, um, transitioning adeptly from one thing to another, and and just kind of maximizing the experience. Yeah. And I like to try things out, and you know that's sort of. <clears throat> I've done voiceovers, too, for Adult Swim show. I was going to mention that, Moral Oral. I mean, to have Adult That's Swim. a different world, I know. Yeah. Well, and so what on your resume, is it hard to get a job, or do you just say, listen, I was the original voice of Jen back in the 80s, and they go, okay, come on in to Adult Swim. Does that give you a lot of... No, it's really a friend of mine, Dino, who created the show. Mm -hmm. I just told him, you know, I'm an actor, and uh, let me audition. Yeah. And I auditioned, and, wow. you know... That's all. That's cool. That's you just put yourself out there, be available, and if you, you know, keep trying. That's that's yeah. my only advice. That's, that's your advice for the fans. Just <laughs> yeah, keep. Yeah, I don't know, because sometimes yeah. people ask me, and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I just, you know, if you like somebody, uh, and you want to work with them, let them know, and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, okay. you okay. never know. That's never all. Know. Yeah. Alright. Well, I think that those are those are fine words of wisdom here to wrap things up. And we can take that advice to heart and uh, find some inspiration in that. And um, cool, cool. Well, thanks, Britta, for all your time. And we look forward to following you here in the next year.